Welcome to Textonation. Joining us is Danica Remy, Asteroid Day co-founder. Thank you for joining us, Danica. It's my pleasure to be here today, Fred. Well, tell us, uh, Danica, what Asteroid Day is all about. Well, Asteroid Day was created to excite and inspire people around the world about the science and technology and possibilities that asteroids present to humanity. And we're really working to encourage the world to invest in the acceleration of asteroid discovery. And our main purpose is really to highlight the asteroid scientists and teachers and um, asteroid missions and new technologies that will help us understand our closest celestial neighbors, asteroids. Well, you know, the, the movies have taught a lot of us that asteroids are something to fear. So set us straight. Well, asteroids are very interesting celestial objects. Um, they are the most uh, populous in our solar system. And there are millions of them that come near our Earth. And they're exciting for a couple of reasons. First, you know, the glass of water that I have on my desk right now was brought to us by asteroids. Um, they present interesting opportunities for us to understand the origins of um, life on this planet. Um, they also provide an opportunity for us to go out and use them as stepping stones to move further out into the solar system. And occasionally they hit our planet, and we'd probably like to have that not happen. <laughs> I suppose not. So what is it that's taking place on, on Asteroid Day, which is the 30th? Yes, yeah, so Asteroid Day was um, uh, created um, by myself, um, the lead guitarist from a group called Queen, Dr. Brian May, who actually also happens to be an astrophysicist, uh, a German filmmaker by the name of Greg Richters, and uh, my friend and colleague, Apollo 9 astronaut, Rusty Schweikart. And so we modeled Asteroid Day really after Earth Day. So nobody owns Earth Day, nobody owns Asteroid Day. So uh, events all around the world are highlighting the scientists and astronomy clubs and teachers and engineers who are working on technology and um, teaching about asteroids um, to help us, you know, understand the most populous celestial object, asteroids. If people ask you why it's necessary, why we need to be educated about asteroids, what do you tell them? Well, we tell them that um, asteroids uh, will provide us the stepping stones out into the solar system. They're great potential fueling stations, water being the first fuel that we might leverage off of an asteroid. Um, and that the more we know about asteroids, the more we know about ourselves, um, because asteroids really will hold the clues and we believe the ingredients to life on Earth. So the missions that are happening right now, OSIRIS-REx and Hayabusa-2, um, that have, are going to visit an asteroid and to bring back um, collections from those asteroids so scientists can, can um, um, uh, evaluate them and, and understand what they're made of. Um, these offer incredible clues to how we came to be here on this planet. And so for us at Asteroid Day, we want people to be excited about asteroids. Um, and we also want the world to think about the need to accelerate the rate of asteroid discovery because they do occasionally hit our planet. Are there things we can do about it if we discover one is headed our way that's significant? Well, the exciting and kind of backwards thing is that deflecting an asteroid is actually easier than finding the asteroids. So... Um, there are several deflection techniques, and NASA is, is um, going to uh, do one of them uh, coming 2023 called the DART mission, the Double Asteroid Redirect Test Mission. And so they're going to do a deflection uh, demonstration with using something called a kinetic impact. So they're going to run a small spacecraft into an asteroid and see if they can move it into a different orbit to test whether or not we could move one if one was coming towards Earth. The second way that we could deflect an asteroid is with something called a gravity tractor. So that's where you take a small spacecraft and you put it near an asteroid out in space and the gravity between the two objects of the asteroid and the spacecraft, you can tug that spacecraft into um, slowly into another orbit. Now, both these techniques require knowing that an asteroid is on the way towards us. And so that's why accelerating discovery is the most important thing because humanity actually knows and agrees on how we would, in theory, deflect an asteroid. So discovery is our priority.
And uh, one would wonder, why, why are they so hard to detect then? Is it because of the size? Well, they're dark objects in very, very dark space, for one. And that the telescopes that we have on the ground um, are, are, are tuned to look for different things than asteroids. So some telescopes do find asteroids, um, but many of them are focused farther out into our solar system and, about, and out into you know, the universe beyond. And so they do find asteroids, and we have some great telescopes that are operating today, the Catalina Sky Survey, Pan Stars, and Atlas. Um, and they find about 2,000 new asteroids every year. But if we have, you know, say more than a 3 million that we need to find, it's going to take a long time with those telescopes. So there's a telescope that is coming online in two years called the Vera Rubin Observatory that'll be pretty good at finding asteroids, probably find about 100,000, maybe 200,000 near Earth asteroids um, over the course of its mission life. But what we really need are space-based assets where you don't have to worry about the sun. You can always have the sun at your back. The telescope can have its sun at the back. Um, and so, you know, part of accelerating the rate of asteroid discovery is investing in space-based um, technology, as well as, you know, other land-based telescopes. But everyone agrees the best way to find asteroids would be out in space. And uh, is it a battle to, to get the funding you need to, to achieve all that? That is correct. So, um, you know, our governments fund um, here in the United States and in Europe and in other countries around the world, they fund these telescopes um, or these missions. And so, you know, prioritizing um, and encouraging your government and public officials to be interested and um, excited about the opportunities of asteroids are really, really uh, an important function that the public can do. And that's why we can learn more about it on, on Asteroid Days. Some of the things taking place, uh, if you can run through a couple for us quickly. Sure. So um, on Asteroid Day, which is June 30th, the anniversary of an asteroid that blew up over an area called Tunguska in 1908, it um, wiped out an area about the size of the Los Angeles area basin. Um, uh, we created Asteroid Day to be on June 30th, and we'll have a worldwide broadcast um, that will be streaming um, via satellites through SES's satellite network and then online on our website, asteroidday.org. And we'll have people who are um, working on the science, working on the telescopes, working on the missions. Um, we have you know, people who are excited about encouraging the world to learn about these amazing celestial objects. So we have a five hour uh, Asteroid Day program called Asteroid Day Live Digital from Luxembourg. Um, where we'll have panels um, and various guest speakers, including um, the science guy, Bill Nye, amongst uh, uh, other speakers, such as the head of the European Space Agency and um, people who are the what are called the primary investigators um, on some exciting missions, Hayabusa 2 and OSIRIS-REx. They'll be talking about what we're learning about asteroids as their spacecrafts um, either um, gather more information around an asteroid to um, collect samples, or in Hayabusa, Hayabusa's two case, um, it's coming back to Earth and will be dropping off its asteroid samples um, later on this year, which will be really exciting. So we'll have panel discussions talking about all things asteroids, because we love asteroids at Asteroid Day. And that's at asteroidday.org? That's at asteroidday.org. Terrific. And I guess there's some irony that one of your co-founders, who you mentioned, uh, Brian May, the astrophysicist and lead guitarist of Queen, he actually wrote, We Will Rock You. So <laughs> I guess there's irony in that. Yes, we love that. We love that. And Brian has been a, a great um, contributor um, to the launch of Asteroid Day. And he continues to actually work with both um, the uh, NASA and ESA on some of their missions where he's doing um, both image analysis and um, research in between, not that he's doing anyone's on a, a tour right now, but in between his his worldwide tour with um, Adam Lambert and Queen. And so he's doing a lot of really exciting research because he's inspired about asteroids as well. Once again, the website is asteroidday.org. 
Danica Remy, thank you so much for taking the time with us. It's my pleasure, Fred. Thank you so much for having me. Cooking with the power of the sun. Hi, I'm Fred Fishkin, here to tell you about the latest innovation from my friend Patrick Sherwin and his great team at GoSun Stove. The GoSun Fusion has arrived using the company's tried and true reflectors and a solar vacuum tube to get you cooking without the mess of charcoal, heavy propane tanks, or smoke. A really bright idea. And with an optional solar panel and battery storage and the ability to plug in at home or on the road, you really can use the GoSun Fusion to cook anytime and anywhere, day or night, rain or shine. I love what Patrick and his team are doing, and so will you. Want to learn more? Head to GoSun.co to check out all of the company's products and innovations, and use the code TEXTINATION to save 10%. That's GoSun.co.